Okay, so <clears throat> here it's a pleasure to uh, welcome um, Marcus Land from University of, of Copenhagen, who will speak about <clears throat> the title you see on the screen, Assembly Maps and Pashke Duality. Please, Marcus. Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I want to give a heads up right away. So I'm sort of only a, an operator algebraist by hobby. I'm, I'm not really an expert in the area. Uh, we'll use a lot of course geometric arguments today, um, of which I'm also not an expert, but my two collaborators, uh, Udi Bunke and Alex Engel are. And this whole project somehow started when I came to, to Regensburg and I was discussing with Udi Bunke sort of ideas of how one can understand that different types of assembly maps can be identified in a sort of understandable and coherent way. And, um, and, and so we started talking about this. And so there's a lot of homotopy theoretic constructions and ideas that go, go into this um, project, but also a lot of course geometric and operator algebra things. So um, I'll try to give an, an overview of a perspective of this paper called, I think, Pashke duality and assembly maps. But today I want to focus on assembly maps and explain to you how it relates to something like Pashke duality. And uh, yeah, I mean, the paper is long, it, it builds on several things before. So really what I want to do is just give you an idea of what are the ingredients, what are the questions that we want to uh, address and sort of how, how do they relate to things that are already known. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to give a heads up that this is going to be somehow, somewhat of an overview talk and not so much uh, filled with, uh, with details about uh, I don't know, operator algebra or course geometry. But, Okay, let's first recall Kasparov's assembly map. So to me, Kasparov's assembly map is what the Baum-Kahn conjecture is about. Um, there might be different uh, ways of interpreting this, but so what I want to do is I want to fix a GC star algebra and G will be um, say a countable discrete group throughout. So yeah, everything that we do works for discrete groups. I do, not want to make any claims for general locally compact groups. And so Kasparov's um, assembly map and the baum kahn conjecture, they are about understanding values of a functor of the following kind. So I want to call it Kg and then a, a n for analytic. So a version of analytic K homology uh, equivalent with respect to G and with coefficients in this GC star algebra A. So now what is um, equivalent analytic K homology? It's gonna be a functor that takes in some kind of space and the precise kind of spaces it takes uh, into account is G locally compact host of spaces equipped with proper maps that are partially defined. That's why, yeah, this locally compact host of spaces are what they are. Proper maps are what they are. Plus means they're only partially defined and G means G objects in there. So. Uh, uh, sorry, partially you mean they are defined on a rope, on a dense subset, on a what? I mean, uh, no, on, an, on an open subset. I think uh -huh. so. It's made in a way such that uh, there is a functor from here taking functions with uh, you know vanishing at infinity, um, and this is going to be an equivalence of categories to uh, uh, what is it? Uh, commutative uh, C star algebras. Okay, so it's just it's just the Gelson dual of commutative GC star algebra. And if you write that out in spaces, um, you have to look at proper maps, but they don't have to be defined on on everything. They can be defined sort of partially, because you don't. Yeah, I mean, between maps of C star algebras, you can have inessential maps, and they will not correspond to globally defined maps of locally compact house of spaces. And so this is what this functor takes as values and it spits out, I mean, as I think a spectrum. So think of a spectrum just maybe as a generalization of a space. It has also maybe negative homotopy groups, but uh, mainly I want to say that it spits out some gadget with, which has homotopy groups. And I usually write it like this, namely it takes the following thing. So we take the G equivariant KK theory of the C star algebra C zero X with coefficients in A. And for me, or I mean, for the purpose of today, this is a spectrum with uh, homotopy groups isomorphic to Kasparov's KK groups. 
uh, well, provided maybe that C zero X is uh, separable and A is sigma unital. Okay, so, so what we did in this earlier paper, I think it's called I don't know, a stable infinity category for KK, accurate KK theories. We just construct uh, categories that allow us to construct mapping spectra. And uh, these are, I mean, they are what they are, but we can calculate their homotopy groups in terms of uh, Kasparov's KK groups, in terms of equivalent Kasparov cycles uh, for, for separable uh, domain and, and sigma unit target. I mean, a notion that's well familiar in, in, in KK theorem, of course. Uh, sorry, okay. do, you, do you, for this uh, model, do you, I mean, the model that you use uh, to construct this spectrum. Is it based on the Kasparov approach with bimodules, or is it based on the Kuhn's picture with the little maps from little Q? And yeah, probably, I mean, to be very honest, probably neither. So the idea is as follows. Uh, you might know from work of Maya and Ness that there is there's this triangulated a triangulated yeah. category KKG. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we upgrade this to a stable infinity category. Stable infinity category by, by purely formal reasons. So what we just do is we look at all GC style algebras and then we just formally invert the KKG equivalences, those morphisms that become equivalents in KKG. Then what you obtain is a, an infinity category whose homotopy category is this triangulated category. And then one can use arguments um, uh, with, I don't know, things like co vibration structures to see that this stable in, this infinity category is in fact stable. So that's a property of some of an infinity category, which allows to extract a triangulated structure on the homotopy category. And this triangulated structure is the usual one that you know. Um, and, and then it's a feature of these stable infinity categories that they're mapping. I mean, yeah, these are, yeah, these are sort of categories as you can think about them, whose, whose mapping objects are, are spectra, naturally, nat mm -hmm. naturally spectra. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, so when, when you define by, by these uh, universal properties, uh, is there, so one feature that, uh, I mean, I'm uh, very much concerned with is uh, this uh, property that KK of sister algebras has, uh, but that uh, disappears when you consider more general algebras. That is that the factor that goes from sister algebras to the KK category preserves filtering co-limits. Oh. And uh, is there a reason why, I mean, I can see this from the construction. Uh, I mean, in the other constructions, you need, some, you have some limit, some, some inverse limit that doesn't commute with direct limits. And yes. this, this limit does not appear in the sister algebra case. I uh, so I wonder if by, I mean, if when you define it by abstract nonsense, uh, of a functor that's used universal with respect to certain properties, how do you see that this limit preserving property is going to happen if this is this derived from? Yeah, I mean, it is, I mean, as far as I understand, uh, it's not true in general. Um, so so the, the problem is twofold. A, um, it's, it's maybe not all filtered co-limits, it's filtered. Yeah, it's inductive, uh, say, yeah. Index yeah, by the I mean, numbers. Only the, I mean, only K theory itself preserves filtered co-limits, I think, right? It's I don't I don't believe that the functor that sends C style algebra to its KK class preserves filtered co-limits in general. Okay, only but if you then, if you only, then take the K theory spectrum of it or the K K groups. So, well, so it's not a property of that category. But limits do exist. There are, yes, this category, I mean, there's, there's a subtlety that I, I mean, what didn't want to get into, but yes. So, I mean, of course we, we consider this category a priori with separable C style algebras because as there's sort of, you know, you know, you know the issues, um, but among, uh, among, um, sorry. So diagrams, so countable 
countable co-limits exist. Yes, that is correct. And uh, countable, yeah, inductive or directed limits you can calculate in the way that you would like to uh, by replacing everything by, you know, mapping cone inclusions and taking the the co-limit on the level of category uh, of C style algebras. But this is something you have to prove, and that is not completely formal. But you deduce everything from the, from the fact that you know it in the triangulated category, essentially, because whether or not some map from a colimit to some other object is an equivalence is something that you can test on homotopy groups, and that and hence that you can check on KK groups. So everything that you know about KK theory just sort of formally passes to this infinity category more or less just by, by yeah. design. Yeah, no, but okay. But you can also define the triangulated category by abstract nonsense without passing through, through right. infinity. And then you will have more, yes, and then you will have more difficulties to establishing yeah. extra properties, that's right. Yeah. But what we want to do is just say, we use everything we know about KK theory, all the different models we have, all the different properties we know, and just sort of say, well, formally, this triangulated category is, is slightly more technically involved to work with. It's it, for us a bit easier to work in the stable infinity categorical level, but sort of properties of that category, we can always deduce from, from the triangulated things where we already know it. So we're not, I'm not suggesting that setting up the theory from scratch just by abstract nonsense will make things easier, mm -hmm. but manipulating the objects, I think is a bit easier in the, on the infinity categorical level than on the uh, triangulated level, as I will maybe point out at a couple of places later. So, I mean, you might know this, of course, if I have a functor between like triangulated categories, it's it's not a property whether or not it respects the triangulated structure, right? You have to give extra data and that's just mm -hmm. usually annoying. And wh whereas for a transformation between functors of stable infinity categories, it's a property whether or not it preserves sort of the thing that you then see on the triangulated structure. And so it's, it's just much, much easier to construct things that are compatible with boundary operators and stuff. I mean, this is all automatic on that level. So that, this is why this is more useful for us. Okay, so I, I apologize for, for being a bit um, vague here, but the statement is there, is there is a way of constructing these KK theory, theory spectra. And again, let me reassure you that uh, if, if, you, if, if maybe G is the trivial group, or I don't know in, in what generality exactly, um, Michael Joachim has worked uh, out these different models, but um, these, these KK spectra are equivalent to the ones that you know. I'm just saying that you can get them from formal properties and they canonically come with composition laws and everything is, is nice, um, but they are uh, equivalent to the things that you're, you're familiar with. So they, they really reproduce what you're familiar with. Okay, so, so this is what analytic G equivalent K homology is about. And if now X is a G co-compact uh, locally compact Hausdorff space and has finite stabilizers, then Kasparov constructs an assembly map from the G equivariant analytic K homology with coefficients in A to, or maybe I should remember what, what this was because then it's easier to give the definition. So this is G equivariant KK theory, C0 X with A, and he gives a map to the KK theory of C, so just the ordinary K theory of A and then the reduced cross product with the group G. And the way one does it is you first uh, use a descent homomorphism. So you pass to the reduced cross product on, on both sides. In this world, I would just say, you know, taking the reduced cross product descends to a founder from the G occurring KK category to the KK category and it induces something on mapping spectra. So this is what this uh, what this functor does, and then uh, you can compose or you can pre-compose with a canonical, so to say, a canonical projection um, uh, uh, on where yeah p x is a projection in C zero x. So so in particular, it's a map from C to there, and you can pre-compose with that projection. Now, um, okay, so, so this projection exists. It's KK class is unique or I mean canonical. Uh, this is a bit not quite enough to make, to make this map itself a natural transformation of spectrum valued functors. But in this paper with, with uh, Alex and Uli, we, we explain how one makes this a natural transformation of functors with value uh, um, spectra 
I mean, with with spectrum values as really an I don't know a natural transformation of functors between infinity categories. This is, as you can imagine, technically slightly involved, so it's not relevant for the purpose of the talk. I just want to say the fact that this class is is not really a canonical class; only its KK class is canonical. Is something that should not worry you on the level of homotopy groups. Then you will get a perfectly nice natural map. But on the level of actual maps of spectra or of spaces, finding naturality is a much, much stronger condition. And so you have to work a bit harder to prove this. But OK, we do. So, so this turns out to be a natural transformation among G co-compact and uh, spaces with finite stabilizers. And this is the usual uh, Kasparov assembly map. Uh, it has various uh, interpretations. If the group G is torsion free, um, it was well known for a long time that uh, this can be interpreted by a Mishenko Komenko index construction. Uh, I, I think I might have been the first to write this down officially, but I think this was well known before. So there are many interpretations of this map. And, um, and it's, yeah, I mean, this is an interesting uh, map to study. And, and the Baum Kong conjecture says that if X is the classifying space, uh, oh, maybe I should say E fin G, the classifying space for finite uh, with finite stabilizers for the group G, then maybe I should give this map a name so that we will call it mu Kasparov, yes, with coefficients in A, then mu Kasparov with coefficients in C is an isomorphism. Okay, so this is what this conjecture is about. It tells us that we can calculate the K theory of the reduced group C style algebra by means of equivariant K homology of this classifying space of, with proper actions. And of course, I mean, you know that this is a, a useful conjecture. It's, it's known in many cases. It's not known in all cases. Um, and it has interesting implications in algebra and operator algebra. So it's also in, I suppose, in, in, in geometry, I don't know. It relates to things like positive scalar curvature metrics on, on manifolds, et cetera. So this is an interesting object to study. So a different perspective of an assembly map is due to Davis and Lück, which I want to tell you about. So the Davis, Davis Lück picture of assembly maps is as follows. So, okay, maybe I should just point out that this is a particular, I mean, to me, this is a particular construction. It says that, I mean, we have, invariance of C-style algebras, the group C-style algebra, it's K-theory, and we can look at this g equivariant analytic K-homology of G co-compact uh, spaces with finite stabilizers, and in that case, there's a canonical comparison map that you can study and ask how close is it to an equivalence. Um, now, the davis lück picture of assembly maps is something that is sort of a very general principle that applies to many, many uh, cases, and it uh, starts as follows. So it says that given a functor E from the orbit category of G to spectra. So the, recall the orbit category is just the full subcategory of G spaces on orbits, on, on spaces equivalent to G mod H for some H, right? Transitive finite uh, G sets. Uh, and then what you construct out of it is a davis lück assembly map associated to this functor E. And it does the following. It relates uh, the G equivariant uh, uh, e theory of the classifying space with respect to any family that you might care about. So maybe let's stick to the uh, family of finite subgroups. And it will compare this uh, to um, uh, the value of, of the terminal uh, orbit, G modulo G. And there's a canonical comparison map. And uh, I don't want to spell out what this is, but I mean, if you know it's something like a homotopy co-limit over the restricted orbit category of this functor. You just look at all orbits whose stabilizers lie in that family, and you take the homotopy co-limit over the restricted functor E, gives you some spectrum, and it canonically compares to the value at uh, G mod G. So this is what this David, davis lück assembly map is about. And examples of this David davis lück um, uh, assembly map uh, include the assembly maps appearing in uh, the Farrell Jones conjectures. So the Farrell Jones conjectures are about uh, calculating the algebraic K theory of a group ring RG or the algebraic L theory. Maybe there is no non algebraic L theory, so I can just leave that out the L theory of the group ring RG. Um, okay, so these are 
invariants that are similar in, in spirit to topological K theory of groups. Now we have a further base ring that we can look at coefficients in, look at these group rings and then take either algebraic K theory or L theory. And again, there are conjectures of, of this similar sort as the baum kohn conjecture, which are known as these Farrell jones conjectures. And again, they relate to other interesting uh, conjectures in algebra and, and, and also topology. Um, so, so these are of course interesting, but uh, there is also a canonical, um, so maybe I should say, there is a canonical functor, and I'll get to sort of what canonical means here, that I want to call Kg, it's a functor from the orbit category to spectra, and it takes an orbit G mod H to the topological K theory of the reduced group C star algebra. I just want to tell you that there is a canonical such functor uh, that does this, and you can you can wonder what um, uh, what its assembly map is. is. So it gives rise to a davis lück assembly map uh, for this functor Kg, which will now be a functor from Kg G mapping to the K theory of the reduced group C algebra. Okay, and um, so. Maybe I should make this precise once. So, um, I mean, I already told you something like this, this G equivariant thing is something that is constructed very formally homotopy theoretically from this functor on the orbit category. It's, it's given by constructing some kind of uh, yeah, homotopy co-limit over, over this orbit category. And, and this homotopy co-limit construction, you can imagine, or you, you can think of as, um, as being an extension of this functor. So maybe I should say this orbit category I told you is a, is a full subcategory of the category of G spaces. And, uh, and there is an essentially unique way of extending any functor from the orbit category to a functor on G spaces uh, in a way that it preserves uh, G weak equivalences. So that means weak equivalences on all fixed points for subgroups, okay? So this is a purely formal thing, but in, in any case, you can think of any functor from the orbit category as just specifying a, a functor for, uh, index on all G spaces, which has some particular properties. It's sort of excisive, uh, sort of it satisfies my Vitoris, and it is invariant under G weak equivalences. And so in particular, you're allowed to evaluate it on the G space E fin G. But, but by construction, there is sort of no preferred E fin G, like any other would be just as good in the sense of anything else that is G homotopy equivalent to it would be equally good. But um, um, so I want to say that choosing, uh, choosing a GCW model for E fin G, um, one can show uh, that the G equivariant K theory of this classifying space is equivalent to the G equivariant analytic K homology uh, with coefficients in C of that GCW complex EFG. Okay. So uh, I really want to point out that this side is is by definition intrinsically homotopy invariant, G homotopy invariant, whereas this side is sort of not a priori. It's really an invariant of actual G locally compact Hausdorff spaces. And if I find the model, then I can, I can write down this invariant, uh, but, but this invariant is somehow much more flexible. It, it allows you to change your space a little bit and nothing happens. Whereas this is not a priori. So, so for, for instance, the C star algebra sees the actual space, right? Um, but the statement is that if you choose a GCW model, then these two are equivalent. And of course, what you want to know is, are they equivalent in a way that makes the, these assembly maps comparable? So the question is, can we find an equivalence uh, compatible, I should say, with the assembly maps? In the sense that, does the davis lück assembly map correspond to the Kasparov assembly map under this equivalence? Um, Can you, yes, so the, the, I mean, 
This is an old question uh, that uh, I mean, was uh, in the paper by, I think in the same paper by, by Davis and Luke, they said how to do it and it was wrong. And then it was then fixed by, um, by, by a, a different uh, uh, presentation uh, by uh, Hamilton and Pedersen, I think that they used this, um, how do you call it? Um, um, what is it that, that you guys, you women do? Sorry? Uh, control topology, control topology. Yeah. Um, so, what, how is this? Could you explain uh, how this is? Yes, I mean, uh, right. I wanted to, I mean, this is sort of a priori a, a historic situation. I just want to explain what is sort of the setup, what is the differences between these, um, between these uh, situations. Okay, so, so the Davis-Lick paper, what they do is they construct this, uh, they construct this functor. Um, so that is not quite correct. There's a technical issue somewhere, but this was fixed by Michael Joachim. But I don't believe that Davis and Lück actually state that this assembly map uh, is equivalent to Kasparov's assembly uh -huh. map. But if so, then they don't prove it, and I'm for sure they don't. They don't officially claim it. Um, you're right that in a paper about control topology of Hamilton and Peterson, where I mean their main goal, as far as I understand, was to show that the assembly map in algebraic K theory and L theory can be described by a forget control map. This they do, and in the same paper, they also say, oh, by the way, if you do this for this topological K-theory guy, then you get the Kasparov assembly map roughly because everything is given by taking an index of an occurring operator. Uh, but but uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I personally was never able to, to really understand how, how this was supposed to work in detail. So I mean, it's this somehow maybe correct, but so the point here is to really give a concise treatment of why are these things equivalent. And I'll say a couple of things um, uh, more about what we do. So, but I mean, I just want to point out that this is a question that needs to be asked. I mean, these two assembly maps are trying to be related. I mean, they compare sort of things that are abstractly isomorphic and you just want to know, are they in fact equivalent maps or not? I mean, mm -hmm. this is a relevant, relevant point. Um, so I should say that, or maybe I want to point out that this is not only an academic question in the sense that, I mean, there are two constructions, are they the same or not? Um, in fact, if you can show that uh, the, the Kasparov assembly map is equivalent to the homotopy theoretic assembly map, then uh, you can use a construction that I did with uh, Thomas Nikolaus a couple of years back, sort of building on, on my PhD thesis, uh, where we compare the, the Kasparov assembly map for K theory and the Farrell Jones assembly map in L theory. And for instance, a statement that you will uh, obtain from a comparison result like this is that the, if the baum con map is injective after inverting two, then so is the L-theoretic Farrell-Jones map. And uh, I believe this is the only way as of now how it is shown that this L-theoretic Farrell-Jones map after inverting two is injective for say amenable groups. Right? Amenable groups are a class of groups to which the um, Farrell-Jones methods are not really accessible, you don't know anything about the Farrell-Jones maps for amenable groups. Uh, but on the K-theory side, we do this, we know this very well. And, and you can use these types of comparisons between topological K-theory and L-theory of C-star algebra that I did with Thomas to deduce things or like transport from one world to the other. But you can only sort of transport from, from a homotopy theoretic one world to the homotopy theoretic other world. And, and then you still have to compare to actual, the actual Kasparov assembly map which is what was claimed since, I don't know, ever, I suppose, but, mm -hmm. but maybe, um, maybe it's worth revisiting every now and then. But I'll say a little bit more about it in a moment. Just want to point out that this is, this, the fact that these are equivalent also has actual implications for the L-theoretic Farrell-Jones assembly map, if you happen to care about that. And, and for instance, I do. So I, mean, I think it's interesting to know something about this no, for sure. L-theory of amenable groups. Um, and as far as I know, this is the way one does it currently. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let me give you a, maybe I should give a construction um, that hints at something that I want to get at uh, 
in the later part of the talk, um, which is the following, uh, maybe let me call it theorem that we prove, namely that for a group G, there is a function, and again, group means countable and discrete, say there is a functor that I call K upper G lower blank, and it goes from the G, G equivalent KK category to functors on the orbit category of G taking values in spectra. So, so for each G C star algebra, you get a functor on the orbit category and hence an assembly map. Right? This Davis Lück type assembly map is the statement. And this functor has a couple of properties so such that one, uh, this functor K G blank is, uh, is exact and preserves countable sums. Okay, so let me say one word about this. So this I said is a stable infinity category, but if you think about it as the triangulated category, then the statement is there are these triangle, I mean, distinguished triangles. And on this side, I mean, this, this is also a sort of a category which has distinguished triangles just by, uh, if you have a functor, you say a, a sort of a triangle of functors is distinguished if each, each value is a distinguished triangle in spectra. And then the statement is this functor is canonically compatible with these triangulated uh, structures. I mean, okay, as, a, as I said, in the world of stable categories, this is a property and the property is called exactness. So this is what this functor is. And in addition, it preserves countable sums that exist on, on, on both sides. So that's something that we have. And uh, the second statement is that if A is a unit to GC star algebra, and I think of it as an object in KKG, then I can, uh, I can uh, give you the value of, oh, sorry. Then I can tell you what um, KGA is as a functor on the orbit category. Um, namely, it's given by the following composite. Um, an orbit gives rise to a G bonological core space. So let me just, again, for, I think for the purpose of this talk, this is not really relevant, I just want to, highlight at which points something like cause geometry enters in this, in this whole business. So there is a notion of a G bonological cause spaces. Any orbit gives rise to such a, a G bonological cause space by, okay, I mean, these are sets equipped with a bonology and a core structure and a G action that is compatible with everything. And you just take the set S and you equip it with the minimal Cost structure and the maximal bonology. In other words, every set is bounded and you give it uh, just the diagonal as an entourage. If that means something to you, then good. If, if not, it's, it's not so relevant. It's a particular cost geometric construction you can do. Um, and then one uses a cost, uh, uh, just an equivalent cost K homology. Cost K homology. Um, that gives a functor with values in spectra. So I'll write for that. K and then I know Uli always writes these course things with a Kraktur X. Okay, X means for, for the, uh, that it's coarse. There is a G because it's equivariant. And then in fact, it's, it's, it's a, a twisted form of it. You just have to apply some particular construction. Again, it's maybe not so super relevant. I just want to say that this functor can be constructed in a way that if you evaluate it on a unit, unit to GC star algebra, the resulting uh, invariant you get is something of coarse geometric nature. Okay, so by, by construction. This is what I want to highlight may, at this point. May I ask, uh, sorry to bother you. Uh, there yeah. is a, a naive thing that one can do given uh, sister algebra A, uh, which is associate to it a functor in the orbit category, which sends um, G mod H uh, to, or S, I mean, a G set S, um, to the cross product of the groupoid, the transport groupoid on S with uh, the algebra, and then take the K theory. Uh, yes. How is this different from, from this other thing and why is this other this new thing better than that? I, I believe I believe they're equivalent, but in the in the course of in the course of sort of yeah continuing to compare it's it's very useful to to manipulate these objects as if they were sort of 
I, as if they were already thought of as phonological core spaces because Uli and Alex have already worked out so much about the theory. So there's just a lot of things available in this slide, but I, I'm going to say something about the values a bit more precisely in a moment. Um, so I believe that these are equivalent. I, I, I'll say I'll say something about it in a moment. Um, so in addition, it satisfies maybe something that you wanted to hear. So that's uh, maybe property three. So if I evaluate KGA on an orbit G mod H, you can calculate the value just to be the reduced cross product with H. This is something that you get. And four, and this is something where this is this perspective is, is quite useful. Um, it relates uh, the these these functors for different values of G. So imagine you have a group G and you look at at coefficients in a GC star algebra that's induced from an HC star algebra where H is a subgroup of G. So we can look at something like you G induce up a, a subgroup, and then you can wonder how does that relate to uh, the functor that you have. Uh, for B and H, and the statement is that you, well, you can look at the inclusion on the orbit category and that can't extend. So let me write a small diagram here. If you have the functor on the orbit category of H, this is KH, HB. The orbit category of H maps to the orbit category of G by just you know taking the product over G with H and S. Um, and then of can extend. So this is going to be K G A. And of course, you I mean it's yeah, you cannot use such a property to the, the define a functor because then you have to check all sorts of all sorts of relations. That's weird. So you have to give a global definition of a functor for each group G, and then you can try to show that it has this property. And okay, it does. So so the statement is that if you take the GA current K theory as a functor, it satisfies this properties. And so the theorem that we prove is the following, namely that for X, uh, G simplicial, uh, maybe G finite, G simplicial Hola. complex ah, with uh, finite stabilizers. Um, so, I mean, it being a G simplicial complex is not so relevant. I mean, at this point, you can think of it as a GCW complex. That's also perfectly fine. Um, so, this G simplicial structure will appear at a later point when we actually go in the course geometry. And, and then, I mean, yeah, we'll have to give some sort of metric, uh, metric uh, structure on these things. And it's easier to work with uh, G simplicial complexes for that. But, okay, so the statement is that for a G simplicial complex with finite stabilizers, there is a commutative diagram uh, that relates the um, the this functor KGA with values in X. So then this has this Davis look assembly map associated to A with values in a point. So this Davis look assembly map in this picture really is just induced by the map that sends X to a point. You evaluate it on this functor KGA. Um, now I said by part three, KGA, the value at a point is of course the same as the value at G mod G. So this is equivalent to KK of C comma A reduced G. And KKC A reduced G comes with uh, the analytic assembly map, the Kasparov analytic assembly map associated to A. And the statement is there is a commutative diagram. In particular, there is an error of this kind, which is an equivalence. Give me, let's give this diagram this name. Okay. So, so in particular, the Davis Lick assembly map is equivalent to the Kasparov assembly map in the sense that there is an identification of source and domain such that the one map is homotopy to the other. Um, now, of course, in general, E fin G is not a G finite G simplicial complex, but you can approximate it by finite such things. Um, and then, in fact, this side is made a priori to be compatible with filtered unions. And this side is not, but in order to get the correct assembly map for E fin G, you just make it so. I'm, 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 I just want to say that 
it is true that uh, this implies that the Davis Glück assembly map and the Kasparov assembly map are compatible uh, also for Ethan G. And there is a slight subtlety that this is a statement about maps of spectra. There's two maps of spectra from here to here and here to here, and we say they are homotopic. And so if you have a diagram and a homotopy, if you apply homotopy groups, it's an actual commutative diagram. Mm -hmm. And if you take filtered co-limits of actually commutative diagrams, they remain actually commutative. Um, in, in our case, if you wanted to do this for, for X and E and G, we would have to get control that the homotopies that fill this diagram are compatible if we change X. This is something that we believe to be true, but haven't worked out. So the statement is as is. It implies that the, the Davis-Lück and the Kasparov assembly map agree on homotopy groups. If, um, if, if you take a, a general E and G, and I do not want to claim that we also prove it uh, on the level of, of spectra. And this is exactly for the subtlety that you have to get control over the homotopy. We just want to be a little uh, precautious here. Because often, and you, you see, I don't know how often you hear talks about from people talking more about infinity categories. I also want to highlight where things get more complicated. And these are the kinds of things that really where stuff gets more complicated. You have to take care of all these homotopies and coherences all the time. It's, I don't know, some things become easier in this world and some things become complicated. This is one of the things where it's uh, a bit complicated. Okay, so let me let me take some time and just give some some perspective uh, about this, um, because I want to say that we're, I mean, apart from um, Hamilton and Peterson, we're still not the only ones that, to claim that we prove such a result. And I want to highlight this very nice work of Julian Kranz, who's now a PhD student of uh, Siegfried Echterhoff in Münster, who uh, did the following um, uh, sort of variant of this theorem. And then I want to tell you maybe just to end uh, how, how our things, uh, maybe add a little bit to the, to the given literature nevertheless. So, uh, so I want to do this remark that uh, essentially this whole remark is due to Kant's. So he observes that uh, the properties one to four of this functor of the functor KG blank, right? I, I said there is a functor from KGG to this guy, which has some properties. So these properties formally imply that uh, the Davis-Lück assembly map is equivalent to uh, what's called the Meyer-Nest assembly map. Uh, okay, I mean, I'd be happy to go into this in more detail after the talk if somebody is interested. Um, I think this is a cool, um, cool result that I, I, I wasn't aware of um, before. Um, but there, okay, so the statement is there is another assembly map in C star algebra you can do, building on an idea of Meyer and Nest mm -hmm. that uh, is uh, sort of again of very formal nature. Mm -hmm. And it is shown that, I mean, it is true, so Meyer and Nest prove that, so Meyer and Nest prove that the Meyer Nest assembly map is equivalent to the Kasparov assembly map. But it uses some non-trivial results, so non-trivial for me analytical results. Uh, so it uses that the Kasparov assembly map is an isomorphism uh, if uh, B is of the form induced. In, uh, yeah. right, if it's an induced algebra from H a finite subgroup. Okay, so is this? Uh but this, but um, I mean, this is formal too. Is, is that so? I mean, there's it's, this it's too, it's too for Farrell Jones as well. Yeah, no, 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 no. But I mean, this is this is a point somehow. Um, in 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 this Kasparov analytic assembly map, as far as I understand, it's not a tautology to prove that uh -huh. Kasparov is an isomorphism mm -hmm. for induced coefficients. It's supposed to be obvious for for the Davis Lick thing, and this is exactly where you use this this these conditions. This, yeah, the, the fact that if you, yeah. you if you have induced coefficients, it's sort of left Carney standard from somewhere. Then from this, it's obvious that the Davis Lick assembly map will be an isomorphism for these induced coefficients, and and. This, oh. as I mean, if I understand correctly, is the theorem of Shabir Echterhoff. Uh, 
building on earlier work of Oyono Oyono. And this is analytically involved. Arguably, they proved this for locally compact groups, and this makes the analysis more complicated. But nevertheless, there is something that you have to prove that is not, uh, not formal, I believe. Namely, yeah, no, the, 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 the discrete uh, case, which is what they studied from a paper by uh, Hickson, who was one of the authors. Yes, uh, uh, and people. Yeah, have, yeah, so, yeah. And yeah. this, okay. In, in. But I'm just saying, uh, this is something that you use. Once mm -hmm. you have this, then there is a nice way of comparing the Maya Nest and the Kasparov assembly map. Mm -hmm. And um, and then these these formal properties you can use to compare the, the Davis Lück to the Maya Nest thing. So this is what Kranz does, and this is a very, very nice observation. Mm -hmm. um, and he gives a particular construction of a of a functor of that kind, um, sort of just a model of that functor. Uh, which has these four properties, but so we show that it's equivalent to this one that we described. So I want to I want to highlight uh, that um, that having this result, I mean, it will give us two things. So on the one hand side, uh, it will show that um, the Kasparov assembly map is equivalent to the Davis Lück assembly map. In particular, you recover this result I mean, because for the Davis Lück assembly map, it's obvious that. Um, it's an equivalence for compactly induced coefficients. Um, so this, this you can recover um, in the discrete case, again, in the case of discrete groups. Um, but there is another point, I think, which makes this, uh, this comparison interesting in its own right. And it's, it's, the, it's the construction of this equivalence on that side. This equivalence turns out to have very geometric, cost geometric meaning. And I think it's sort of interesting that in um, in a comparison of the Davis Lück assembly map and this Kasparov assembly map, something like a Pashke duality might might appear. So let me just, in the very uh, last minutes, indicate very briefly um, where this comes from. Um, so so how do I do this? Um, so maybe I should say um, in order. Can you still see this map? Yeah, in order to construct the map from this, this uh, G equivariant uh, K theory to G equivariant analytic K theory, uh, we um, make two steps. So we introduce a third variant that we, I don't know, let me give it a name, kg rho, no, chi x, x. And, and then we construct these maps individually. That makes sense. And uh, so um, where maybe, maybe let me highlight it like this, where this map is um, sort of formally, or maybe not formally, so this is, Intrinsic to course geometry. So this is, yeah, this is more or less just this is some functor that I mean, as I told you, its values on uh, on a space. This was um, this yeah, this was given here. So it it is given by some sort of equivariant course K homology, and this map is essentially just changing this precise version of the cos K homology a little bit in a way that on G finite G simplicial complexes, you don't change anything, okay? But, but sort of you, you, change, uh, you change the precise cos K homology a little bit. And the second version is an equivariant uh, form of Pashke duality. So, I mean, Maybe you know this, so classical Pashke duality is something about if you have maybe a metric space, a proper metric space, um, then from it and, and say, maybe you have a representation uh, on, I mean, this C algebra C0x acts on, uh, on a bounded, bounded operators on a Hilbert space. Then from it, you can construct this uh, algebra of pseudo local controlled operators and the row algebra, and you can take the quotient algebra. And in some sense, these pseudo local operators and locally finite operators are, are, are coarse geometric invariants, right? Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. they, yeah, 
by definition, they 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 are controlled objects over X. And and what classical partial duality says is that the ordinary K theory of this quotient C star algebra, the D algebra modulo this row algebra, identifies with the analytic K theory K homology of that space X of this proper metric space X. And this so this is of course the 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 natural analog of analytic K homology in the equivariant context and what we propose is that this is an appropriate variant of well this k theory of that category this quotient category of the d algebra by the row algebra in an equarian context um, and and sort of we we prove that uh, you can construct a natural comparison map building on on work of uh, kiao and rho or an interpretation of this assembly of this um, Pashke duality map from kiao and rho and uh, yeah, and, and 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 then you have to prove that it's an equivalence on you know G finite G simplicial complexes with finite isotropy. Um, mm -hmm. But okay, this is something we do. It's a bit technical. Um, I think I'm over time already, three minutes. So let me stop here. But I'd be happy to uh, to tell you a little bit more about about this object and and, and how it relates to to classical Pashke duality because I think it's quite cool. But okay, I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let's see the public asking questions. Gisela, you raise your hand or you are you clapping them? I am clapping. <laughs> nice talk, <laughs> Marcos. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, I have a question. When when you say the pro the properties one to four in the remark of Kranz, ah, there, okay. The, this, this remark, is this remark in the paper uh, about comparison? Uh, yes, maps? yes. Or, so, yes, so, I mean, A, I can explain it to you briefly. It's, 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 it's not very complicated, so maybe, yeah, may, may, I don't know. If you allow me, I, I can just explain to you how it works. And it's also explained in our paper with Alex and Uli. Okay, so, yes, I, I, I have seen that, but uh, not in details. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a long paper and, and, and it's also not super easy to navigate in it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the, the main idea, I think maybe that, that this, uh, that goes into this is the following. You can look at, okay, so let me say if, if you have a, inside this category KKG, I can look at all objects that generate yeah. a subcategory that are compactly induced. And this inclusion has a right adjoint, let me call it C. And so you can compare the, the assembly maps for uh, KG, C of A, of a point for C of A and for uh, for A, and I mean that they're compatible is a is sort of a formal is a formal thing, and the Maya nest assembly map is is this one, right? For A, the Maya nest assembly map is the map that compares. I mean, again, recall that this is the K theory of C of A reduced R G, and this is the K theory of. Are you using R. there? Your notation, right? Yes, exactly. So, so this I your I your KG. Yes, yes, right, right, yes, right. I'm just saying that if you have any point for KG sub something which satisfies these properties one to four, then I'll give you an argument for why it's why it's as it's Davis Lucas assembly map identifies with my nest. That's and this is the argument of Kant's. I, I want to make this very precise. This is what Kant's observes. Um, so I guess this is this property three. Is that right? I don't know. Let's check. Yes, the values mm -hmm. on the point are given by the, the cross product. And, and the Mayonnaise assembly map is the map that's induced by C of A mapping to A after applying the cross product with R, with G. Um, now, uh, now what you, okay. Now this map is the davis Luke assembly map for A. This is the davis Luke assembly map for this algebra C of A. And now as uh, uh, Guillermo pointed out, I mean, the fact that this Davis-Lucas assembly map is an isomorphism for compactly induced coefficients is sort of obvious. 
So, so this map is an equivalence. And likewise, uh, this is an equivalence if X is built from G mod H with H finite. In other words, if it's a finite GCW complex with finite isotropy, mm -hmm. then there is no difference between taking coefficients in A or C of A. Uh, that's essentially due to the fact that <clears throat> this inclusion is the right orthogonal to the things that vanish on finite, so finite isotropy. Okay, so these, these are all formal consequences of the situation. And hence, you identify the Maya, Maya nest assembly map with the Davis Lück assembly map via the zigzag. Mm -hmm. And the only things that you've used are these, these properties I wrote down. You need to know that certain exactness holds and that you have compatibility with you change your groups and induce coefficients and blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So this is the consequence of property four mostly of probably four. So whenever you have such a functor, it's davis lucas assembly map will agree with Maya nest. That doesn't specify the functor, but it turns out that all different, I mean, all constructions of functors that we know that are written down that satisfies these conditions are also equivalent in Hopso. So, yeah. so uh, uh, you wanted to say something about Pashke duality. Ah, yes, uh, yeah, if, if, yeah if, I, if I may, so. Okay, so about uh, <laughs> Okay, so um, I, I wanted to say that, let me give it, let me give it first a definition. So let me give it a definition that is my, maybe only slightly helpful, but, but nevertheless, so that we can get on the same page. Um, so I said, we'll write this, this map relating this G equivalent K theory to analytic K homology uh, by an object that's again, of course, geometric in nature. And for it, we have to give the following definition and it's, or maybe I can do it like this. Um, uh, right. So it, it takes as input something that's a bit more, more general. It's something that we, I mean, that we call G uniform bonological core spaces. Such objects have a conet infinity functor. And let me just give you the, the definition for now. That spits out a bonological core space with G action. And from it, you construct a spectrum by doing um, something like, I don't know, we have to take a suspension somewhere to get rid of shifts. That's something that might be familiar from, um, from Pashke duality. And then uh, we do a, a, a slightly different uh, twisting of course Ecker and K homology. So in, in this other variant, I told you there are some symbols like Kan min appeared and here we use something like Kan max. And the main point I just want to make very brief is that you need to do Kan min twists in general to obtain the right, the right values on orbits for all subgroups and not only for the finite ones. But you have to take Kahn max in order to compare nicely to this analytic world. And the statement then is on spaces which only have finite isotropy, you will not really see a difference. That's, that's the point. But, but somehow these different twists come in that on the one hand side, you want to make sure that your functor on the orbit category has the right values on orbits and on all orbits. And on the other hand, you want to make sure that uh, you can compare nicely to the, to the analytic world. And this is where the, the, this maximal bonology is needed to compare to the the analytic world. But in any case, so I just uh, very briefly want to say that um, that the following uh, uh, holds. So, uh, so we have this KGA and then we construct a comparison map to this KG uh, chi A and then a further comparison map to KG analytic A. And so this is sort of intrinsic because geometry. So maybe that's for now not the not the so relevant point. Um, so I want to very briefly tell you something about this part. Uh, right. So how, how does that work? How we call, and maybe I'll just tell you how this works. Um, so uh, there is a uh, there are maps relating uh, a uniform bonological core space to different versions of these cone functors. So, uh, so this is of 
transfers um, from G U B C to G B C. Right? I told you that this functor is, takes in a G uniform bonological core space and spits out a G bonological core space, and then you can take course homology theories on that. And there is a whole sequence of such functors just uh, where I write X for the forgetful functor, I just forget the uniform structure. And then there's an OX and an O infinity X. And this map become, become fiber sequences uh, or distinguished triangles, if you will, after applying uh, good course homology theories. Uh, for instance, something like this course G, uh, uh, homology with any, I don't know, can, min, max, whatever you wish. All, all these variants are good homology theories that give you, that give you uh, fiber sequences. And now the main, the main idea is to say that uh, this gadget is constructed by applying a twisted course homology theory to this object. Mm -hmm. And it just turns out that you can describe the, the value of this functor on that object and on this object in very, very similar terms as the pseudo-local operators and the locally finite pseudo-local operators, pseudo-local controlled operators on X. This is sort of what this core homology theory does, whereas this core homology theory takes, in addition, the locally finite ones. Now that this is a fiber sequence roughly tells us that this cause homology theory evaluated on this conet infinity roughly takes the role of you know, the D algebra module or the, the row mm -hmm. algebra. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the natural analog in, in, in this world um, of, of this Q algebra. And then we just take the very same steps as Q and Rho do to construct the Paschke comparison map to, to, yeah, to, yeah, to, to map this, uh, this type of quotient of course homology theories to an analytic version. Um, so, so you can interpret this as some sort of uh, this business of the control. Uh, yes, yes, that's right. So, so the point is, of course, what I've swept under the rock in this whole talk is how any of these course homology theories are defined. And roughly how they are defined is to uh, take, if you, if you take a biological core space with G action, say, um, you associate to it a C star category of objects controlled uh, by X, taking values in something that you, uh, some C star category that you associate to A in an appropriate way. And mainly the idea is to get rid of this idea that in, in classical partial duality, what you do is you fix a representation and then you look at pseudo local operators in that representation. And instead here, you just work with the category of all representations. Uh, throughout, and then you don't get into functoriality issues that you always have to find a suitably big, right? What was classically called a very ample representation, as to uh, to make sure that you have um, that you have functoriality. And the main problem being that in this Euclidean context, I don't think we know that there are always ample representations in the sense that we can that there is always an you know, good enough to look at one particular representation. So in this context, it's more natural to just look at all representations at once that sort of naturally um, gives rise to a C star category in which we can take controlled objects. And these controlled objects for, for this O phonological core space are somehow the pseudo local control things. And those are the locally finite ones. These quotients then uh, give rise to yeah, a natural analog of this Q algebra. Um, and yes, so what we work out is that all of these things can be made natural and that you can construct this, this multiplication map that is needed in, in the Kiao row approach to Pashke duality. So we, we really just literally copy their ideas and then you have to implement the, this in, in the world that we are um, to, to obtain these comparison maps. Um, and yeah, and I mean, yeah, I mean, we, no. I mean, it's a long paper. It's, it's very C star categorical. The, the point is that you can, I mean, the, the main point at the end of the day is that for all maps that you care about, both the homotopy theoretic assembly map, the Kasparov analytic assembly map, one can, one can construct models in terms of functors between C star categories. And then you just have to compare these functors of C star categories. And at the end of the day, just apply K theory to them. 
So it's, it's not so different, but it's a very concrete argument. So somehow at the end of the day, you compare everything to explicit models in terms of C star categories, but the C star categories that enter are sort of, of course, geometric nature. And, uh, and uh, this is why, why this, this, this kind of Paschke comparison map enters. Yeah, I'm sorry for, for taking so much of your time and-, and Well, well I mean, I interrupted you all too frequently, so. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, wait, wait a sec, uh, because uh, so are there any more formal questions before we uh, stop the recording? So, if not, let me stop it. <laughs>